Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He is worthy to be praised. I, um, my, my grandkids live with me. And, you know, they go to school. And I have a three-year-old that goes to school now. And she's getting indoctrinated to all the little diseases that little kids have. <laughs> She has, she doesn't have that buildup yet, not to catch every cold. So she came home with a cold. And you know, my bed is the healing bed. That's what they tell me. <laughs> and that's what she did. She ran to sleep with grandma. And Monday night, I started feeling a little funny. Tuesday morning, I couldn't get up. And I, I talk on the phone all day. But when I got up Tuesday morning, I sounded like a man. I said, no way. <laughs> no way. I sounded like a man for about three days. I didn't work after Monday. I'll go back this Monday. And I thought I was going to have to tell pastor, you got to do this. But um, the Lord is good and greatly to be praised. I guess that bed does have some kind of power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. My kids believe in it. My grandkids believe in it. And it seemed like whenever they get in it, two hours later, they up and running around again. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be before you long because I don't want to start coughing and stuff. Um, I'm going to let y'all in on a, uh, this this. You probably gonna have a little more scripture than anything. And I'm gonna start with Isaiah 58, the first through the tenth verse. And I'm reading the NIV version. And before I start reading, I just want to give honor to my pastor, the Pastor Emeritus in their absence, First Lady, everyone in their respective places. I thank God for you being here. I thank God for being able to see you. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord reads, shout it aloud. Do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the descendants of Jacob, their sins. For day after day, they seek me out, always trying to find God. They seem eager to know my ways. You know, people seem like they're eager to know about God. They're eager to know how to walk this walk, how to talk that talk. They seem eager as if they were a nation that does what is right. Oh, my God. That indicates that somebody ain't doing the right thing. You can't fool God and has not forsaken, he's telling them, the commands of his God. They ask me for decisions and seem eager for God to come near them. Do you really want God to answer? You're acting like you do. Yeah, I went down south on you. Acting. Y'all know what that means. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. He says, verse three, why have we fasted, they say, and ye have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? Oh, they've been fasting and praying and don't feel like God is paying them any attention. Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please. Come on, there's a way to fast. You can't just do as you please. That's what it sounds like. And exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife. My God, can't stand to be hungry. And in striking each other with wicked fist. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Come on, somebody. Somebody just got an answer. You're wondering why he ain't answering your prayers because you fasting like these people. 
and you're expecting your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for people to humble themselves? And I kind of put quotes around that humble. <laughs> you're not really humbling yourselves. Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying in sackcloth ashes? Is that what you call a fast? A day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice? That's what it's supposed to do. And untie the cords of the yoke to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood, then your light will break forth like the dawn. If you do all that, if it's like that, and your healing will quickly appear, my God, then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Oh, my Jesus. He says he going to have your back. Then, then he'll have your back. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. My God, you will cry for help and he will say, here am I. Uh-huh. If you fast right. If you do away with the yoke of oppression and with the pointing fingers. You know, some people love to point fingers. And malicious talk, Lord, Jesus, don't let me get even a crack or a hair of anything about you because my mouth is going with it. I'm putting some evil with it. You know, we can't just hear something and say it like it was. I have to. It's just the law. I have to make it juicier than it was when I got it. Malicious talking. And if you spend yourselves in behalf of the hungry, come on now, if you do something for the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like the noonday. Your night gonna become like the noonday. Noonday is when the sun sets the highest. That's a bright time. Sounds like joy came at that point in time. So you can be in darkness. But if you fast right, your night, your darkness will be like a noonday. Amen, amen. Um, Philippians 2 and 5 says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Romans 12 and 2 says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, I thank you for your word. Your word all by itself has already began to do the work that you designed it to do. And I just thank you for it. Bless, Lord, the hearts and the ears of those that heard it and let it move on them so that they can be and do what you called them to be and do. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah and amen. You can be seated if you like. My thought for today is there's a virus among us. There's a virus among us. <laughs> and I want to tell you something. When I went to open this a few seconds ago over there, I pulled down my little um, listing to see what was there. And I saw downloaded. There's a virus. I, I got scared for half a second. I forgot what I titled this. It's like, what? How can the virus? That's how viruses do. They sneak right on in up on you. And I don't know if you heard about it or not, but there is a really bad virus going on, going around, and it's killing people just as fast, if not faster, than COVID-19. 
And like COVID, this virus has been here for quite some time. But in recent years, it has raised its ugly head in a manner that is taking us out by the hands full. This virus is called Meitis 2022. Since COVID-19 hit, Meitis seems to have doubled, if not tripled. Perhaps you're saying, what is this Meitis? This is the first time I've heard about this virus. But let me tell you, you've heard about this virus before, and maybe you may have even suffered from it before. Meitis is a severe case of me, 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 and I, I, I. But not to worry, there's a vaccine for meitis. And the name of the vaccine is HB66, also known as the Holy Bible. Like the COVID vaccine, there are many manufacturers of this vac vaccine. You can get it in the oldest and most well-known version, which is King James or NIV or ESV, MET, LET, NLT, or even the new King James version. And if you're not good at deciphering what the word is and what it's saying, they got one just for you too. It's called the message format. Everybody can understand that one. Since COVID, I found that we have people uh, who may have already been headed to the meida stage. They've been headed to the meida state of mind, have fully caught a hold of that thing and have become infected with uh, the meida virus. We've leaned even harder toward me, me, me. What about me? Mine, 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 state of mind. A lot of you are sad, miserable, can't find joy. No matter how hard you try to make yourself happy, you still can't find joy. Oh, but we quote the scripture, the joy of the Lord is my strength, and I can and I am leaping for joy. Well, you can leap all day, but joy ain't coming in the morning. You ain't trying to walk in holiness. Uh-huh. And I know you're tired of hearing holiness is right, but the truth of the matter is holiness is right, and that's just a fact. We have to ask God to help us to do what his word says, because we need help. Ask him to uh, admit that, like the woman with the issue of blood, Admit that we got issues. We got issues. And one of the biggest issues is we've been pretty much programmed us to be stuck on ourselves. There are some folk that take the name Facebook literally. And every post they make, you see their face. You don't have to wonder who it is. Uh, who, who's, who made this post? Because if you look down a little bit further, you're going to see their face. Their face accompany every post they make. Lord have mercy. We have to get off of us. Get cleansed of this meitis virus. We can't help build the kingdom of God if we're stuck on me, me, me. We've got to start doing what God says. And, and I, I know that state, uh, the state of this world right now kind of makes it easy for you to be stuck on yourself. The word says that we'll be lovers of ourselves. So being that the word is true, we have a big fight to keep this virus from getting a hold of us. To avoid the virus doesn't require fasting like this group was doing. You don't have to wear a mask to keep from catching it. You just simply have to tend to God's people and stop thinking everything is about you because I promise you everything is not about you. Even that thing that's most personable is not about you. And we have it. We have it now. We have our cell phones and all you see, you see people doing this. <laughs> they put on a new dress. Oh, wait a minute. I got my hair done differently. Ooh, let, oh, wait a minute. I don't like that one. Let me delete that. Let me, I know they said, put your hand up above like that. I wish I would have bought my stick so I could put it way out that people see, won't see my hand. And, and if not you doing your own self, you want somebody else. Here's the girl, take my picture for me. I want my whole body. 
I want you to see my shoes in it. I'm tired of just taking my head shot. We are caught up with ourselves. Even the little babies are taking pictures of themselves. I went on my phone. I must have had about 100 pictures. My little three-year-old, snap, 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 snap. She's snapping everything. She's snapping herself. She's snapping the clothes on the floor. She's snapping. <laughs> She's snapping. She's just snapping. She just came at you and then come back to me saying, look, Grandma. And she loved when I opened my phone up. She said, that's me. That's Lele. That's Lele, Grandma. I said, yes, it is. That's you, baby. That's my, my stank of pink. That's what I call her. But that's the kind of world. That's the society. That's where we're at right now. We're being encouraged to be self-indulging. Everything is all about you. All the help you books is all about you. It ain't, and then it's not talking about help you so that you can move on and build God's kingdom. It's all about you. It's not most of them, not even talking about some kind type of deliverance so that you can work the work. It's just about getting you. I'll be all about yourself. They encourage you to be about yourself. No, it's time out for being about everybody else, for caring about them. That's your problem. You too much caring about this one. You always buy stuff for them. You'll never buy nothing for yourself. That's not what we are supposed to do. I've been flogged. If I see the brown and, and not boosted, boasting or bragging or anything like that, I went to the open door to serve meals on a, a first Sunday. And this is first Sunday too, so anybody interested, just let me know. But I had on, I'm born on St. Patrick's Day. So I had this sweatshirt, this hoodie on that said something about being Irish, part Irish and part something else. And this young man said, oh, I love that sweatshirt. My, I'm, my dad is Irish. My grandmother on my mom's side was Irish. I'm like 75% Irish. I was like, okay. He said, that's really cool. I really like it. And I'm so glad that that day I had a shirt on underneath it because I took it off and gave it to him. And I promise you, it was one of my favorites. But this man had a T-shirt on. It was cool. He had a T-shirt on. He didn't have something nice and thick to cover him. It wasn't coat time, but it was cool. It made his day. It made his day so until when he saw me again, he drew a picture and he gave it to me. I have it on my file cabinet in my office right now. But he just appreciated it so much. It shocked him, number one, that I would take that off and give it to him. He was so elated. And that's the kind of thing we have to do. We have to stop saying, you're riding in your nice warm car and you see somebody out there, they're hustling. They, they're trying to do whatever they can to get a dollar or whatever. And you have two coats in the back seat. You see them freezing. Would it hurt you to give them a coat? That's what we have to do. We got to feed them. We got to clothe them. He says, the poor you have with you always. And when we see them, we just can, can thank God. That is not me. That is not me. And the people at the open door, some of they're, they're homeless. But some, all of them don't uh, just sit around all day. Some of them have jobs. They just they're not making enough money to pay the mortgage or pay the rent. Some of us are just a paycheck away from homelessness. If you be honest with yourself, if we don't manage it just right, <laughs> we borderline. Amen. We have to look at others and, and put ourselves in their shoes and think, what can I do to help them? Huh? What can I do that will be, make an effective uh, witness for the Lord? It's, again, it's not about you. It's not about us. It's about kingdom building. Everything we do is about kingdom building. 
everything. We say we're ready for the Lord to return. He's not going to return until we go out and everybody hears that word. We have to support the missionaries that go over to Africa, the deepest, darkest parts. Because he said everybody. He didn't say everybody except the people in the wilderness. He didn't say everybody except those Africans that are down there and haven't ever seen a person of another color. He said everybody. And there's some people that are willing to go out to these deep, dark, scary places. I know I'm not. I'm not willing to go out in the jungles of Africa. I don't even want to move back to Florida. They want me to move back home. I don't want to move back to Florida. Too many snakes. Come on. And you know Africa got some snakes for you. They got snakes that look like people that know, got a nose job. I'm like, whoa, an asp. That thing is ugly. It looked like a big nose head. I'm like, oh, no, they got snakes that bite you, and you run to the wall, and you're dead. Nope, not Africa's not my mission. Neither is Florida. <laughs> I can't do it. But we have to do things right. In 58 and 2, it says, seek me daily. And here Judah was seeking God every day as though they desired to know his ways. Yet at the same time, they were living in sin. Mm -hmm. And indifference to God's righteous commands. Today, some people that are claiming salvation may worship the Lord outwardly, appear to be uh, delighting in him and praising him and seem eager to know his ways. And at the same time, they be conforming to the ways of the world and neglecting the diligent study of the word. That's what keeps you from getting me itis. That kind of worship is an insult and an abomination to God. God's people were complaining that he would not help them, but God knew that their worship and fasting were hypocritical. Just like that, it didn't come from a pure heart. He tells them that no religious act, come on now, we can't just act religious, has any value to him. It doesn't come from those who humbly seek God or seek to obey him. True fasting is for the purpose of breaking the power of the flesh in our lives. And if you do it right, it'll break. I'm a witness. It's supposed to be a, a special consecrated time of prayer and, and, and you and God and God's people, we, we seek him seriously and, and sacrificially. It's sacrificially too. Uh, and for me, sometimes I do, I go the whole nine with the sacrifice. Not only do I not eat, but I turn my, my devices off. Mm -hmm. I turn my devices off. I put a message on my voicemail saying, if you need me, call my daughter. And if you don't have her number, then you don't really need me. That's the way I feel about it. Because anybody that with an emergency from my family, they know her number. But anytime you're fasting and you're praying, people that haven't called you in 10 years will call you during that time. And, and they may or may not need something. Some of it will be, man, I just was going through my phone, this old phone that I was getting ready to give to my grandson. And I saw your number in here because I, when I got my new phone, your number didn't transfer over. And I thought, let me holler at them. That's the kind of stuff that happens when you're fasting. When you're fasting, somebody will go downstairs and bake some cookies. Nothing smells better in the house than the aroma of cookies coming up the stairs. Well, I take that back because somebody may also have the desire to have some good country fried chicken. Oh, my God. That chicken smell. That thing right there, it'll ruin the nation because it's something about it. What? That was the hardest fight I had when I wasn't uh, eating meat. And the smell of that chicken, just, just give me one bite. Just a bite. I went so far as to take a bite, chew it, 
and spit it out. I was trying to hold fast to my no meat thing. Um, I haven't been able to hold fast to that since my daughter and them moved in because <laughs> they cooks. <laughs> and I just, you can't fight the temptation of good fried chicken and pork chops and fish. <laughs> okay. And a few other things, but we'll leave them alone. Our, that's my flesh dog. And we have to fast to break the flesh, even from things that some things that we shouldn't be eating. We have to fast to overcome that. I was an ice cream holic. I mean, holic. Like get up two o'clock in the morning, drive to Wegmans when it was open that late and get me a gallon of ice cream because I could not sleep without it. I ate ice cream every night. I showed it too. <laughs> I ate ice cream every night. I said, my Lord, my God, and my King, you have got to deliver me of this. Look at me. It's two o'clock in the morning. I'm headed to Wakeman's. I'm just like a crackhead. I need help because I can't do it. And drinking milk didn't do it for me. I needed the ice cream. But a pecan, as a matter of fact, that was my favorite. Oh, man, but God did it. He delivered me. I still like ice cream, but I don't love it. It doesn't have control of me anymore. Here in Isaiah, in the fifth verse, is an exchange between the Israelites and God. The people have been fasting. And they felt God had noticed. He told them that they were fasting with wrong motives and that they had things in their lives that needed to be dealt with. Some of us have some things that need to be dealt with. I'm going to leave that with you just like that. You know what they are. I, my baby boy called me. He said, I've, I've been praying. I've been talking to God. And he just don't talk to me. What is wrong? I, I got some stuff I need to hear from him. And he don't talk to me. But everybody else, I know people that smoke, dr drink, do this and do that. And, and they always talk about, man, God told me such and such and such and such. And they ain't even nice. They ain't good people. Why isn't he talking to me? I said, baby, he is talking to you, but he's not going to talk to you through a thunderous boom, boom, boom. You're not going to, you're not going to have him come sit on the bed and say, look, I need you to go right when you go to work. Don't turn left like you normally do. No, he started telling you that maybe two days ago. He might start telling you when you're riding, take, take a right turn here. And you'll say, mm -mm, I'm going this way because it's the fastest way to get to work. And you'll keep on going that way. But if you would have taken that right turn, it might have stopped you from being in an accident. It might have stopped you. You might have ran into somebody that wanted to give you something. You just got to listen, for, get to know that voice. A lot of people don't know that voice. In first sis, he says, not this, this is not the fast that I've chosen. The fast that God approves is one that is done by uh, love for him and in genuine concern for those who are oppressed or for a real oppressive situation. As believers, we have to understand that the giving of tithes and offerings to the church, that doesn't free us. It doesn't free us from our responsibility to give to the poor. We should still share our food with the hungry and provide clothing for those who don't have any. We have to make a sincere effort to determine the needs of others, not just ourselves and especially within our local congregation. Come on, there's some people in our house that need some help. We have to commit ourselves to help in whatever way we can. And Galatians 6 and 10 says, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Come on, we have to do for each other. We have to be helpers one of another. But sometimes we need to uh, get that me itis under control. Because sometimes when you start to do something for somebody else, you may think about, you know, if I don't do this, I could buy me that new tablet that I was thinking about. Hmm. If I, if I don't do this, I could go out to King Crab for dinner. 
if I don't give them five dollars, I could. That's how the enemy starts. He doesn't want you to be a helper. He doesn't want you to make an impression that's going to make people know that God is good. He's alive and well, and he's still working miracles. He doesn't want you to do that. So he'll do things to stop you, to try to infiltrate your mind. But we have to let this mind be in us that was also in Christ Jesus. Huh? We have to get a renewed mind. We have to get up off of ourselves and get the mind of Christ. Huh? We have to do this. It's our responsibility to do that. He said, don't be conformed to the pattern of this world. The pattern of this world is me, 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 I, 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 my, my, mine, and only that. And don't you come near them. This is my circle. Don't you come near it. Huh? Because that's what it's all about. It's all about you. But he said, for us to be transformed, I like that word transformed. Uh, transformed, that, that, that's not like a transaction. A transformation is totally different from a transaction. Because a transaction, I did one of those this weekend. I put some money in the bank. I went back later. <laughs> I took some money out the bank. That's a transaction. You can put a little something somewhere, then come back and get it. Transaction. Transformation, that's a total change. Transformation is like baking the cake. You can take some eggs and some flour and some milk and some flavor, some sugar, and you can take all of that stuff, and I might have missed an ingredient, put it in a bowl, get some milk and pour it on it and do that number to mix it up. Like somebody said, you ain't mixing if your elbow ain't up high. You can mix that stuff up, but now nobody mixes. Now everybody got the blenders and the mixers and they just. But once you do that, you no longer have eggs, flour, sugar, butter, milk, flavor. Once you mix it up, it becomes a what? A batter. It's a batter. It's a whole nother form. It'll never be eggs and milk and sugar and flour and all of that stuff again. It is now one thing. That's a transformation. But guess what? The transformation doesn't stop there because you can take that batter, pour it in a cake pan, put it in the oven, turn that oven, have the oven heated at about 375, 400 and let it sit there for about 45 minutes. And guess what happened? It transforms again. It'll never be better again. Even if you take that cake out and put it in a bucket of water, it still will never be better again. It has transformed again. And guess what? You can transform it one more time. You can take that cake that's sitting there brown and pretty, get you some frosting and put on it and whip it up and make it nice and pretty. And guess what? You have just done another transformation. And God wants to do that to us. He doesn't want us to stay eggs and butter and milk and sugar and flour. He wants to move us from one stage to another. If you've been here for a long time and you're still in the same stage, there's a problem. You're missing an ingredient. And the ingredient is you need your HB66 vaccine. You need to get that shot. Take that word and read. It'll move you to the next level. You can't read this word and not move on. You can't continue to read this and not move on because the word, it doesn't really need me. It doesn't need me for real because the word has the power within itself to do what it says it will do. Huh? You need the word. The word will kill the me, 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 I, 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 me, I, this virus. It will kill it. If you read that word, amen, that's what we need to do today. There's a virus among us. We need to get rid of that virus. We need to get rid of that virus. It's our job. It's our job. Our job count is counting on it. Every time we take another step, we transform to another level. And somebody said, new level, new devils. 
well, you're at a new level. You got what it takes to fight that devil. He's not going to move you to a new level and not give you what you need to make it through it. He's not just going to stick you out there. Huh? He's going to give you what you need to make it through that. Whatever it is. And sometimes we stay on the same level. You know why sometimes we stay on the same level? Because we never pass the test of that level. When you was in school, if you didn't pass the test, you did what? You repeated the grade, didn't you? Some people repeated until they were so old, they just got kicked out. <laughs> we don't want to be kicked out in Christ. <laughs> but you have to take that test over again. And the good thing about it is you recognize it. My Lord, my God, and my King, I just passed the test. Amen. Amen. And sometimes you pass tests you don't even think you uh, need it to be tested for until that time comes. Amen. We all have to be willing and ready to take the word and apply it to our lives. We have to. This, and as much as I, I do try to do some of the stuff, this thing here hit me because I know I could do even more. I know I can. But when you stump on your own toe, you do better. Amen. You do better. And that's my plan to do better. Anybody want to do better? Does anybody want to do better? Amen. You you want to you you want to be involved in kingdom building. You want to when you meet the Lord thy God, Him to say, "Well done, my good and faithful servant." You want Him to say, "Dear, look at this. I kept a record, girl. You was busy. Oh, girl, you was doing it. I loved the way. Look at there. Ten people got saved that night. What?" And, they, and these four still say, and he giving you account of the work that you did. And then he comes, and he hands you that big old crown to put on your head. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have a big old crown. I'm planning for one. And if you're planning for it, that means you gotta work for it, right? <laughs> it don't just come, you gotta work for it. I'm working for a crown. I'm working for a crown. I wanna see him one day. And I want him, I don't want, the one thing I don't want, I do not want him to say, who are you? I don't, even, I don't care if you use my name. name do what it does. <laughs> I don't know you. We have got to get it together. We've got to do better. I, this wasn't even my message for today. I had a, this morning when I start to read the scripture again, I got like a ticker line said, hold up. This is being interrupted for a special delivery. And that's what he gave me. So if he gave it to me, breaking, taking away the message that I did have, which I was fully confident in. And I almost felt like I might even give a little, well, <laughs> but he said, no, not today. We're going to do this. So that tells me that somebody, somebody needed this. Somebody needs to get off of themselves. Stop having pity parties. It ain't about you. What it's about is doing what he said, do. If you fast like he said, you won't have to have the pity party. God, don't listen to me. He ain't answering my prayers. I've been praying. I've been fasting. I've been doing everything. And I, he, he haven't answered any of my prayers. Pity party for you. Get it right. Deal with that thing that you know God has been tapping you on your shoulder. And then he tapped you on both shoulders. He stood in front of you and said, don't you see? Don't you hear me? And then after he ignored that, he started backing away and said, okay, I'll let you go ahead and do your thing. 
I'm going to protect you from some things, but I'm let you feel a little bit of this right here. But if you get it, deal with it. We got issues. We got issues. And we have to deal with those issues. Some may be painful. Some may be hard to get over. But it's on us to get the dealing with the things that have you stuck on yourself. No more meitis. No more meitis. No more meitis. I got the Bible on everything I have, every device, I have the Bible on it. If I'm sitting down for a few minutes, I can pop it up and start reading. And I know some of y'all do too. Y'all have that Bible on all your devices. I ain't saying you read it, but I am saying you got it. It's there, it's waiting for you, huh? And, and don't be fooled with the trickery of Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat and all of them because they are letting you know I'm here. Hey, hey, so-and-so's here. Hey, so-and-so's on Snapchat. Ooh, ooh, here, Instagram. Somebody posted something about money. Somebody posted this. They, they're constantly notifications. I turned the notifications off on my phone. They were killing me because I'm sitting there. I'm working. I have it on my desk. And even though I'm not really looking at it, it distracts me. I see it pop up. I'm looking, pop up again. I had to turn those things off. Too much distraction. Do what you know you need to do that's gonna help you to be able to get where you need to get. Amen. You, you don't have to look at, you don't have to get notification for everything everybody posts on Facebook. Because you'll be stuck like this all day. I know I was hooked one time. I, I, and that's when I made the decision. Oh, no, we're not going to be like this. It may look like I'm on if you go, you know, you see the little green dot saying out the is on Facebook. It may be on, but doesn't mean that I'm on it. I miss a lot of birthdays three days later. <laughs> Happy belated. <laughs> but that Facebook spending three hours on it, I was ashamed of myself. I've been sitting here for three hours. Oh my God, I can't believe it. And I'm saying that and still pushing up. <laughs> still trying to see, who, let me see, did they go to the party? Oh, he said he wasn't going today dinner. He right there in all the pictures. Oh, that's a nice picture. Now you got to look at all the pictures and decide whether you're going to like or love them or care. It will take all your time away. It just, ugh. Feeding, feeding what? Yourself, your nosy self. Your nosy. That's the bottom line. It's just nosiness. And I know you tell yourself, oh, I ain't nosy. But that is interesting. I ain't being nosy. I'm just checking on my mom, see how she doing down there in Florida. Check my sister. Now let me check my brothers. Okay. Oh, everybody doing fine. If you can put it down, then that's fine. But when you see one of your classmates got something up there too, then you move on to a cousin and another cousin. Before you know it, your whole day is gone. Me, Itis. Me, me, me. I, I, I get delivered. Amen. We need it. We need it because we need, we need everybody to have the mind of Christ Jesus, which is to be about his father's business. We have to be about their business. Amen. If there's anybody today that knows that you're stuck. Need some help. That needs prayer. If you got to come up, just raise your hand and talk to the Lord. Tell him I need help. My eyes are closed out if you raise your hand. Let everybody close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. And if there's someone here that needs that help today, Lord, I'm asking you to look on the crowd. 
lives. You see a hand raised, Lord, I'm asking you to help them. You know what their issue is. You know what they're going through. You know what it has them bound down. God, I'm asking for those that are online, Lord Jesus, that you'll help them today. Free of anything that has them bound, that's stopping them from being to do the kingdom work that you've set up for them before they were born. Lord, put someone in their paths that will open the door that they need open to be able to move in you. Father God, I'm asking this today that you will free your people. Free your people, Lord Jesus. Free us. Free us, Lord, that we can do what you have us to do, that we will feed the hungry, that we will clothe those who don't throw naked, that we will find shelter for those that need shelter. Father God, we want to be about your mission. We want to do what you would have us to do. We're not looking to do things to have the world look at us. We're doing this to build your kingdom. We love you, Lord. They love you. They love you and they need your help now. And Lord, I thank you. I thank you in advance for their deliverance. I thank you in advance for showing them where they can do better. God, even if there's people in their lives that needs to be moved out, God, I'm asking you to show them how to do it in a manner that is good, in a manner that won't cause friction. Lord Jesus, make it easy for them to be able to separate. Make it easy for them to be able to separate. God, if, if they're dealing with uh, things that are not like you, Father God. I'm asking you to help them. If it's someone that smokes, God, I'm asking you to give them what they need to be able to put the cigarette down, to be able to put the joint down, to be able to put the blunt down. God, I'm asking you to do it for them now, Father God. If it's alcohol, God, I'm asking you to give them what they need to be able to turn their back on it. Lord, I'm asking you to touch them now. If it's sex, Lord, I'm asking you to give them what they need to be able to say, nope, not until I'm married. Whatever it is, Father God, I'm asking you to meet that need right now so that they can minister purposely and intentionally in the kingdom without the enemy patting them on their back and saying, oh, but you got high last night. Are you down here talking about God? But Lord, I'm asking you to free them of that thing so that they'll be able to run in your name. In Jesus' mighty name, the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen, church. Come on, give God a hand clap in this house. We, um, we thank God for the woman of God and for the word today. Amen. How many know we need, we need the word? We need the Bible. Amen. Praise God. We thank God for those, those scriptures and that word on today. Amen. And, we're, and we uh, are grateful that those of you who may have heard the word today, and we encourage you and implore you and encourage you and speak out uh, into existence that when you, as you receive that word, that you would reach out, amen, praise God, to us, that we would help disciple you, amen, those who may be listening online or those who may be in person. Uh, oftentimes when we get a good word and then you go on, that enemy is waiting, amen, praise God, and you need to be strengthened. You need to have that strength of the, of the saints, amen, around you you uh, because the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much and you're going to need help amen this road is not easy amen the bible says even says that amen praise god you know that we heard uh, pastor emeritus talk about it on on last week amen 
uh, that road, amen, is not easy. Amen, praise God. Uh, very few uh, make it into that road. Amen. So we, we want to be helpers, of, as the minister said, of one another. Amen, praise God. Uh, so we're asking if you have received that word today and you may be listening, please reach out. All of our information is, is just a, a click away if you're online. Amen. You can reach us uh, via phone or email or reach out to us or a prayer request. And we want to connect with you. We want to pray for you. We want to offer, uh, amen, this church as a church home. If you do not have a church home, home uh we have uh we we would we have plenty of room here for you amen praise god and we would love uh to have you here amen so we thank god we're getting ready to have our tithe and our offerings this is our first sunday of the month so we're doing our facility modernization uh and i'll come back to you after we log off online and give you some updates around that but we're doing our tithe and offering and we also are uh as we're doing our tithe and offering we are encouraging our online visitors or our online viewers, please, sir, please, ma'am, to consider this ministry. Uh, this is a ministry that's built on a solid foundation. The Church of God by faith uh, is coming up on our 101st National Assembly. So this church has been around for over 101 years. Amen. Praise God. So we're standing on a solid foundation and here at prayer house amen praise god we're on a solid foundation and we would offer and we put out there a plea for please sir please ma'am to consider this ministry we call it out every time we're looking for philanthropists to consider this church uh to give to amen praise god uh we're looking for people to consider this ministry uh as a as a as a, as a, a, a opportunity to tie to this ministry online if you want to so our deacon's going to tell you how those ways that you can give but I, I just want to let you know that as you have you done your ties also your offering this month uh this week is going towards the facility modernization this particular day that offering is going towards the facility modernization so of course it's your ties but in addition to your ties we're looking to raise money uh for some improvements uh that we're making we've been making improvements all for the last two years, we've been doing things consistently, making those particular improvements, whether it's our sound, whether it's through the senior meals program, our kitchen, uh, various things, our lighting, various things we have been doing, as you guys can see, that we've been doing throughout the last couple of years. Our air conditioners, amen, praise God, our, our heater, our furnace, we've been making a lot of improvements and repairs and things to the church. We have a beautiful facility, amen? We have a beautiful facility that God has blessed us with, and just like any house, it need love. Come on, somebody. It just need love. Just like the house you live in. Amen. It need love. And, and I believe that God house should look better. Amen. Than our house. Amen. God house should look better than our house or just as good, if not better than our house. Amen. So I am not asking, I don't ask anybody with particular to give, even though I will give some suggestions of what I think uh, will help us get to this goal expediently. So there's, 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 there's suggestions I'm giving, amen, but I'll give those later. But uh, I'm giving, I gave last month, I gave 500 in addition to my tithe. And me and my wife, and this month we're giving 250. Uh, me and my wife towards the facility modernization. I believe nobody should beat the pastor giving. Come on, somebody. So we're gonna be giving uh, more. I'm not asking you to follow me, but if you can, go ahead and give that 2,000. If you can, <laughs> it's all right. Amen. I'm not gonna limit you. You know, go on and give what you can. But I am gonna come back uh, later on in our announcements as I show you some announcements concerning that. Uh, off when we go offline, I am gonna give you some suggestions of what I think will help us to reach that goal. Uh, that the goal that we have much quicker. So uh, again, I'll call up our seeking to come on and lead us in our offering and pray and then we'll log off and we have a few announcements before we dismiss god bless you uh thank god for each and every one of you praise god praise the lord church praise the lord, uh, praise the lord. hallelujah uh, here's an opportunity for all of us to participate in our service today of course we participated through our regular service that we just had that we just gone through uh, you've just had an opportunity to enjoy our praise and worship. That was kind of our entree onto this part of the service. And you just heard a wonderful word from our minister Tyson. Amen. A wonderful word of, from our minister Tyson. And that was me. Uh, she was talking about getting out the way, removing the flesh so that you can let God have his way. Hallelujah. 
And of course, you, I'm sure that you all have felt the presence of the Lord in our service today. Uh, and here's another opportunity for you to participate in our service through your giving. Hallelujah. Uh, Paul, Apostle uh, Paul, 2 Corinthians 9 and 7 said, let us give as we are purposed in our heart, uh, but not let us give begrudgingly. He wants a chill for giver. Amen. He wants you to be happy about and be glad that you're doing something for the Lord. And there are many ways that you can give uh, to our service today. The first way is through uh, envelopes. Our ushers are moving through uh, our sanctuary right now, and th they will uh, guide you on that. The second way you can give is through our website at www.prayerhouse church of God by faith. That's prayerhousecogbf.org. That's prayerhousecogbf.org. Or you can go to our church app and, go and download our app through Google Play, Amazon Store, or Apple Store and look for Prayer House Church of God by Faith um, tab uh, and follow the prompts. Amen. Amen. You can also give through our church app, at, and our handle there is uh, dollar sign prayer house 270. That's dollar sign prayer house 270. And finally, you can give uh, through mail, uh, which is uh, prayer house church of God by faith spelled out. That's prayer house church of God by faith spelled out, P.O. Box 30108. That's P.O. Box 30108, Rochester, New York, 14603. And let us pray for the offering. Amen. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity, Father God, to be in your presence one more time, Father God. We thank you also, Father God, for the opportunity to be able to give as it is purpose in our hearts, uh, as it's purpose based on our relationship with you, Lord. We thank you for those that gave. We thank you for those that wanted to give and could not give, Lord, but you can also give through your time. Amen. We ask for these blessings, Lord, in your name. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Glover, for um that offering, praise God, and uh, we're getting ready to log off our online visitors, and then we'll have a few announcements, and we'll let you go. Father, we thank you for those who have joined us uh, for the word today and who have fellowship with us. They could have been anywhere, but they chose to log on with us. We thank you for those uh, families. We thank you for those who may have given their life to Christ, and we pray in the name of Jesus that they would reach out, that we may help disciple them, Father. We pray over their households that they you bless them and keep them to the next appointed time, God. Bless them right now in the name of Jesus, and we give you all the glory and the praise. And remember, we are a church where we believe that God is still working miracles. Praise the Lord.